International borders are about to open up for us Aussies. And today I thought I'd quickly just have a bit of a look at what we need to do before we get on a plane and head to our favorite destination. Let's explore. For those of us who are double vaxxed, the 1st of November is a very important date in a lot of states in, New, in Australia, especially New South Wales and Victoria. Our international borders will fling open. Now flights might be a little bit hit and miss, and if you look online, there's still some um, confusing information because the rest of the world has not caught up with the announcements of things that will be kicked in on November 1st. Mainly that, we will be able to travel if we're double vaccinated. And today I thought we would look at a few things that we need to keep in mind before we get on that plane. If you check out the video above, there's a website called canitravel.net as well as I look at Skyscanner for planning a trip. Canitravel.net has updated all their information. So as well as telling you what you do or don't need to do when you get into a country, it tells you what you need. So most of, or whether they are open and if they're open to vaccinated people, um, whether you need to quarantine, PCR test or rapid anti antigen tests, which ones are okay to enter a country. Many countries are different. So check that one out. Let's start with when we book. As I said, canitravel.net will give you the most up-to-date information as it is, not what it's gonna be in a month's time. And so it will tell you if a country is even open to receiving tourists. Some countries are still not. You can also find out whether you will need to quarantine because that is another added expense that you may need to allow into your budget. At the moment in Australia, you have to go into hotel quarantine no matter when you come out. Now that will change and we'll get to that in a minute. And that's costing $3,000 in most states for the first adult and then there's some differences around the country for different for the second adult and then subsequent people and children within the, the quarantine facility. But they're in a hotel that's in the choice of the country or the state that you go into and part of the program. But from November 1, New South Wales will be dropping all hotel quarantine for double vaxxed Australian citizens and return, those returning home. They can go um, and just resume life as normal. For those who are returning home who aren't vaccinated or aren't double vaccinated, they will have to enter into a hotel quarantine facility or hotel of the government's choosing, again, at their own expense. But it is important to jump through all the right hoops and do what your state says you need to do or what the state that you are entering says you need to do um, as you return home. Some countries still have some sort of quarantine. For instance, Fiji at the, will require to go into a hotel for three days, uh, have a negative COVID test going in and then get one within that first 72 hours once you hit Fiji before you can go to onto wherever it is that you've decided to stay. Um, other countries just need you to have your proof of vaccination and we'll get on to how you as an Aussie citizen can get your proof of vaccination and a rapid or a PCR test um, or a rapid antigen test 72 to 48 hours before you board the plane so and they need to be negative results of course so that is just some of the basics that you need and that are good to check exactly what the requirements are in Australia we've been able to get PCR tests through um, the local government health departments those tests are not the tests you need to board a plane. You need to actually have, and especially a lot of countries require, the proof of laboratory reporting. So um, you can't, the little text message that you get when you have a test through, say, New South Wales Health that says you are negative is not enough to get you into many countries overseas and so you need to actually pay for that. So that's another expense and that can go from anything, I'm hearing reports of like $75 up to about $225 to get your PCR test before you can fly back to Australia. So each time you have a test, 
that's an added expense that you need to include into your post-COVID travel. If you're getting value out of today's video, why not hit the like button? It helps to YouTube to know that this is a video worth sharing and it helps our channel along. And for that, I want to say I'm really thankful. Thank you. Let's talk about how us Aussies get our proof of vaccination certificate. Over the last couple of days, the federal government has made it really easy. What you need to do is head on over to your MyGov account and from there follow the steps to claim your certificate. Um, you can print that out and if you do have trouble with that, apparently you can go to Medicare and Medicare will help you with that. The other thing that is important that we need to touch base with here is travel insurance. Anyone who's been around, who's seen any of my tip videos in the past, and I know it's been a while since I've made one, I am a big advocate of travel insurance. I've never had to use it, but I've always had it. The one time I did forget to purchase travel insurance, I was so nervous something was gonna go wrong and we would have to foot this massive bill. Make sure that you check the product disclosure statements and all the other thing paperwork that comes with your insurance policy that you get one that is insured for COVID. Some countries require proof of your travel insurance before you um, are even allowed into the country. If you get sick while you're away with COVID, you may be put into quarantine and that could be at your own expense. So two weeks stuck in a, a hotel or a quarantine facility while you are sick is another expense that you need to be able to cover. And if you've got a family or even just a husband and wife, that, is, that cost will add up quite quickly. Let's talk about some of the resources that we've got that we can check into to find out. As I said, canitravel.net and even Skyscanner are great resources to actually check where you can go and what the requ local requirements are. For us Aussies, it is smarttraveler.com. If you go there and you type in where you're going, it'll give you all the resources that you need. It'll give you the travel warnings and travel levels, whether they're, they are opened or closed and up to the date information about what is required to travel there um, from a government point of view. Then go to that country's um, equivalent to their immigration uh, website and information pages so that you are getting the most up-to-date information. Make sure that you take note of things that will cost extra because as I've said PCR tests you will have to pay more than likely have to pay for. Assume you are going to have to pay for every COVID test required. You will need like proof of vaccination, you may need your proof of travel insurance all of that you need to check before you go so that as you present where you need to go and is there a special entry application process you need to go through now? A pass you need to get that allows you to go into that country and freely move around. So check what the local requirement is and whether you need to get any extra information. I was reading a news report today and something in it that I thought was worthwhile mentioning was they were referring to Fiji, but I think this is important to keep in mind in any place that is just opening up. If you're going to a place that's opening up, lower your expectations. Remember that these guys are getting used to a new way of doing tourism. They may be understaffed still. They want to give you the best experience possible and they will do it to the best of their ability. But remember, they might not be firing on all cylinders as a um, location. And lastly, have a ball. Enjoy your trip. Unfortunately, international travel is not on our short term horizon, but as soon as it is, we will let you know and I will be going through all of these steps. So where are you going to first? And have I left anything out of your post COVID world travel checklist? Let me know in the comments below because we all need to make sure we're traveling this world as safely and as thoroughly informed as possible. These are just a few things that have changed in our post COVID world as far as getting on a plane or going overseas is. As Australia opens up, and we get to welcome family and friends home and eventually tourists and we get to explore the rest of the world. May we do it safely and may we do it as informed as possible. 
If you got value out of today and you want to see more, why not hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and ring that little bell, that way you'll be notified of our upcoming videos. Thanks for joining me today. As always, travel brilliantly and we'll see you next time. Bye! If you liked what you saw today and you want to see more, check out the playlist above or find us on social.